Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Millions of Egyptians protest the Muslim Brotherhood, but President Obama told Christians to remain quiet. And a Catholic priest is beheaded by the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. A Nigerian woman is denied entry to the U.S. because she's Christian. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and this is PIJN News. We like to do three things on this show. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray in Jesus' name, the scriptures about the news. Are we ready for our first story? As breaking news is coming out about the coup d'etat in Egypt, where the army has now overthrown the Muslim president of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohamed Morsi, we read behind the scenes that the Obama administration who's been propping up the Muslim Brotherhood is now widely rebuked and hated by the Egyptian people. Front Page Magazine reports that as Egyptians of all factions prepared to demonstrate in mass against the Muslim Brotherhood and against President Morsi's rule, that President Obama and his administration were pressuring Egyptian Christians not to protest in Egypt against the Muslim Brotherhood. The protesters ended up in the millions and eclipsed even the uh, 2011 protest that ousted Hosni Mubarak, the prior president. Among other influential Egyptians, Morsi recently called upon the Coptic Christian Pope Tawadros II to urge his flock, Egyptians, millions of Christians, uh, Coptic Christians in Egypt, not to join the protests. And then President Obama weighed in through the US ambassador to Egypt who asked the Coptic Pope to try to prevent Egyptian Christians from protesting. The Coptic Pope, of course, politely informed America that his spiritual authority over the cops does not extend to political matters and he could not prevent Christians from protesting when they were being abused by the Muslim Brotherhood. Leading opposition activist Shady Elgarzai Harb said that Obama and Patterson, the US ambassador, showed blatant bias in favor of Morsi and in favor of the Muslim Brotherhood. And they added that their remarks had earned the Obama administration the enmity of the Egyptian people. Indeed, the US ambassador's position as the Brotherhood's lackey is disturbing and revealing on several levels. Under Morsi's rule, the persecution of Coptic Christians was practically legalized. In fact, even enshrined in the Egyptian constitution, which established Islam as the official government religion. An unprecedented number of Christians, men, women, and children were arrested, often receiving more than double the maximum prison sentence under the accusation that they blasphemed Islam or criticized its false prophet Muhammad. Well, consistent with the Obama administration's doctrine, which promotes Islam and the Muslim Brotherhood in places like Libya, and Syria and, and Egypt. Well, they were also propping up rapists and cannibals to wage Islamic Jihad against secular leaders who were protecting Christians. Of course, the US supports the Muslim, Christi the Muslim leaders, but opposed the seculars who were protecting the Christians. When Christians protest Islamic leaders who are trying to make their lives a living hell, instead the Obama administration tells the Christians to know their place and behave like dhimmis, which is Islam's appellation or word for non-Muslim infidel, behave like infidels who must live as third-class citizens and never again complain about their inferior status. Well, that's the news as reported by World Magazine. I wanna ask also, why is President Obama still funding the Muslim Brotherhood with American tax dollars. We all know that he gave F-16s to Egypt's military and the encouraging of anti-Christian persecution is really should be contrary to American values. We should promote religious freedom overseas. Instead, Obama 
has been positioning himself as someone who wants to promote the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, now Obama's trying to backpedal since the Egyptian people rose up in the millions, now have thrown out Morsi, uh, put either the army or the courts back in place until a soon coming election can decide who their next president's gonna be. President Obama's backpedaling by saying, well, really our position has always been, it's not our job to choose who Egypt's leaders are. Really, then why in 2011 did Obama say that President Hosni Mubarak should be replaced and he should step down as president? Why has it been Hillary Clinton's policy as Secretary of State for the last four years, the first four years of the Obama administration to prop up the Muslim Brotherhood and propel them into places of power where they would oppress the people, where they would enforce Islam against religious freedom? Sadly, Hillary Clinton became the domestic enemy of religious liberty and the American constitution when she promotes a Islamic totalitarian regime in Egypt. And now even that has been rejected by the Egyptian people. Well, I wanna discern the spirits here for a moment. I think there is a demonic spirit inside of Islam. In fact, it was inside the false prophet Muhammad. When he said, oh, I've seen this vision of an angel and I'm writing the book, the Quran, he was really listening to a demon. And that demonic spirit told him to write in the Quran, kill the infidels, slay the infidels, and lie to cover it up, the practice of taqiyya. But here's what the Bible says, here's what the Holy Spirit would say. The Holy Spirit, I believe, would pr promote religious freedom, not totalitarian dictatorship of Islam against the American, uh, excuse me, against the Egyptian people. The Bible predicts and prophesies revival for the Egyptian people, that they will come to their savior, Jesus Christ. This is prophesied by the prophet Isaiah in chapter 19, who wrote, it will become a sign and a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt for they will cry to the Lord because of oppressors and he will send them a savior and a champion and he will deliver them. Isn't this being fulfilled now in our very ears that the Egyptian Christians are crying out to the Lord because of their oppressors and God is sending them a savior and it's not Barack Obama and it's not Mohammed Morsi, and it's not the false prophet Mohammed, the savior that's coming to Egypt is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your champion and he will deliver you. And we praise God that this is now going to become a possibility. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name for the Egyptian people that you would send revival to them as you prophesied to Isaiah, God give them religious freedom to accept and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, to receive their savior and their deliverer. We pray in Jesus name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, a Catholic priest is beheaded by the Muslim Brotherhood in Syria. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about Israel? Do you wanna help prevent a second Holocaust? Listen, I'm a Christian chaplain and my website is PrayInJesusName.org. But we need you to take action and sign a petition there to defend Israel. In fact, the Obama administration is doing the opposite. Here's the first petition we want you to sign and that's stop the US taxpayer funding of the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you know your taxpayer dollars are promoting Islam overseas? Here's a picture of Hillary Clinton. She was laughing during the Benghazi hearings. But the bigger story is why as Secretary of State was she sending American taxpayer dollars to fund Islam? in Egypt, in Syria, and Libya, not only that, but in the Palestinian Authority to oppose Israel. Here's a picture of American F-16s being sent to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We need to stop American taxpayer funding of that. And where is this going? Well, it's really moving to Iran. Here's the president of Iran, newly elected guy. Uh, but did you know he's just as radical as Ahmadinejad? This new president, Hassan Rouhani, is a radical Muslim cleric, former chief of their nuclear weapons program. When they build nuclear weapons, who do you think they're gonna target but our friends in Israel? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned us when he gave his speech at the UN that they are in the final stage of building an Islamic bomb. Here's a petition you can sign. Defend Israel and protect the Jewish homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. In fact, petition Congress to move 
the capital of Israel to Jerusalem and put our U.S. Embassy there. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org and we will fax that to your congressman and it's free. Please take a stand today, defend the Jewish people, visit PrayInJesusName.org to stand with us and stand with Israel. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps and we're going to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures. Our next story comes from The Blaze who reports, Syrian Catholic priest Francois Murad was killed last weekend by jihadi fighters. He was actually beheaded according to a report by Catholic Online, which is linking a video of the killing to uh, showing the brutal murder of Murad who is 49 years old, who was also setting up a monastery in Gusanaya which is in Northern Syria. Last Sunday on the Christian leader's Sabbath, extremist militants trying to topple the secular president Bashad Assad, Bashar Assad, the same terrorists now who were armed and supported by the Obama administration, the Muslim Brotherhood, breached the monastery and grabbed the priest. While earlier reports suggest that Murad the priest may have been shot to death the Catholic Online reported Saturday, the Vatican is confirming the death by beheading of the Franciscan father, Francois Mersad, who was martyred by Syrian jihadists on June 23rd. The Catholic News Agency offers several quotes from several local sources who report that the radical Al-Qaeda linked Jabhat al-Nusra or al-Nusra Front was behind the savage killing. In videos posted by LiveLeak purporting to show the execution, dozens of men and boys are seen cheering as three men are seated on the ground awaiting their grisly fate. The men are then methodically beheaded one at a time by men holding what appears to be a simple kitchen knife after which the heads are placed on top of the bodies. According to Catholic Online, the first victim was the Catholic priest Murad. A frenzy ensued with dozens drawing out their smartphones to capture the bloody scene. As a chorus of Alu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, sung, it was sung by the jihadi uh, capturers. Several observers are seen moving within inches of the bodies in an effort to capture close up photos. This should make it clear to Christians around the world what jihadists or the Muslim Brotherhood are about. Make no mistake, Catholics and Christians around the globe are under dire threat particularly from the spread of militant Islam. Until the threat is recognized and taken seriously, martyrdoms like this will continue. Vatican Radio reports that Ganas, excuse me, Gassania, the village in uh, Northern Syria with a majority of Christian population has been under attack by Islamist fighters in the last few weeks, forcing most of the residents to flee for their safety. A Vatican spokesman said the world must know in fact, the Obama administration will direct this to you. You must know that by supporting the Muslim Brotherhood and the gunmen, that the West is actually arming the extremists to kill Syrian Christians. With such stances, not a single Christian will remain in the East, said the Vatican spokesman. In another story from the Examiner, they're reporting that the police in Turkey that's a Western nation, right? No, they're still ruled by Muslims because they've recovered the body of a 16 year old girl. They say relatives buried alive in a so-called honor killing as punishment for what? What did this girl do to be buried alive? She was found guilty of talking to boys. Turkish police found the girl's corpse after following up an anonymous tip. The tipster told police that the family killed the girl shortly after deciding her fate at a family council meeting. Her body was then buried under a chicken pen. The autopsy result is blood curdling. According to our findings, the report says, the girl who had no bruises on her body, no sign of narcotics or poison in her blood, was alive and fully conscious when she was buried. 200 such killings occur every year in Turkey, accounting for nearly half of all of their murders. 
So that's the news as reported by the examiner. And I wanna take a moment to discern the spirits here. Let's think about this. Inside of the Christians or even this young woman, we perceive there is uh, the Holy Spirit of who is really crucified, who is persecuted inside of the Catholic priest, obviously he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and he goes to his cross and he is martyred for his faith. Or in the girl's instance, she was martyred for simply talking to boys, really? Is that such a crime to be a girl who wants to talk to boys? Of course, we discern the demonic spirit inside of their oppressors whether it's in the Muslim Brotherhood, whether it's in the government or just a couple of jihadists, when they shout, God is great. They're not talking about our God. They're not talking about the God of the Bible. They're talking about the false God of Islam. Allah is a false God, it's a demon. And when they worship that demon, that spirit of violence rises up inside of them to go out and kill all the enemies of that demon, including in this case, the Catholic priest. And this reminds me of a prophecy in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, isn't this what Jesus predicted? Here's what the Holy Spirit says in Revelation 20. And John the Revelator, seeing a vision, he sees the thrones and, on, and, and he sees those who sit on them. The judgment was given to them. And he saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony in Jesus and because of the word of God and those who had not worshiped the beast or his image. Do you know now that this Catholic priest, Father Murad, has been martyred, beheaded, that he is sitting on a throne in heaven in judgment upon his persecutors, and he may be the one that stands with Jesus when these persecutors are thrown into hell. This is prophesied and it's happening in heaven today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will liberate the oppressed, that you will stop the persecution and we rebuke the demonic spirit of murder that is inside this demonic religion of Islam. And we stand against you with all the power and authority of Jesus Christ in his name, and we say you must bow your knee to the King of Kings, to the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of forgiveness. God, let all of the Syrian people come to faith in Jesus Christ and have their sins forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, the Obama administration is denying visas for Christians from Nigeria. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about Israel? Do you wanna help prevent a second Holocaust? Listen, I'm a Christian chaplain and my website is PrayInJesusName.org, but we need you to take action and sign a petition there to defend Israel. In fact, the Obama administration is doing the opposite. Here's the first petition we want you to sign and that's stop the US taxpayer funding of the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you know your taxpayer dollars are promoting Islam overseas? Here's a picture of Hillary Clinton. She was laughing during the Benghazi hearings. But the bigger story is why as Secretary of State was she sending American taxpayer dollars to fund Islam? in Egypt, in Syria, and Libya, not only that, but in the Palestinian Authority to oppose Israel. Here's a picture of American F-16s being sent to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We need to stop American taxpayer funding of that. And where is this going? Well, it's really moving to Iran. Here's the president of Iran, newly elected guy. Uh, but did you know he's just as radical as Ahmadinejad? This new president, Hassan Rouhani, is a radical Muslim cleric, former chief of their nuclear weapons program. When they build nuclear weapons, who do you think they're gonna target but our friends in Israel? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned us when he gave his speech at the UN that they are in the final stage of building an Islamic bomb. Here's a petition you can sign. Defend Israel and protect the Jewish homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. In fact, petition Congress to move the capital of Israel to Jerusalem and put our US Embassy there. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org and we will fax that to your Congressman and it's free. Please take a stand today, defend the Jewish people, visit PrayInJesusName.org to stand with us and stand with Israel.
God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps, and our next story comes from World Magazine, who reports the Obama administration is denying visas for Christian refugees, but they're granting visas to Muslim refugees. Now, why would the Obama administration screen the immigration process to keep out Christians and welcome Muslims? A family of Christians is wondering that same thing, fleeing political persecution in Nigeria they applied to visit the United States, not for permanent immigration, immigration, but just to attend a conference on overcoming traumatic distress. They were being persecuted, there's a war there, Muslims are slaughtering Christians, so some of these Christians who are victims of the trauma wanted to come to a traumatic stress conference here in America. But of the four Nigerian teenagers with similar stories who applied to the US Embassy for visas, at behest of a group called Tuesday's Children, the American Embassy denied visa requests for the three teenagers who were Christian and welcomed the visa request from the one teenager who was Muslim. What was the reason they gave to the children's mother? Insufficient family ties. Well, thanks to the Muslim terrorists, the Christian mother doesn't have enough surviving immediately family members, only her mother remains in Nigeria to compel the teenagers who visited the US to return someday to Nigeria to be reunited with their family. So that they don't have enough family members left alive after the Holocaust there, and that's why they can't come to America in the first place. Are you kidding me? The Muslim, however, the Muslim teenager was trusted to go to America and then some, trusted to someday return, you'll be welcome back to Nigeria because you'll be welcomed back by your fellow Muslims. So you have plenty of family ties. We trust you to come to the America come to America because we know you're going to return to your Muslim family. It's becoming more and more difficult to believe the Obama administration's sincerity about confronting Islamic terrorism at the level of wills and ideas. In Dublin last year, the US Embassy sponsored a seminar for Muslim business leaders, which included promoting Sharia compliant financial instruments. And in Northern Nigeria, the US Agency for International Development has spent over $45 million on education initiatives that primarily benefit, again, Sharia law or Islamic law based schools. Most recently, the State Department's Office of International Religious Freedom in May financed a Holocaust awareness trip to Auschwitz for imams and several Muslim countries, including Nigeria and the United States. The Nigerian government on May 16th declared a state of emergency to battle Islamic terrorism in three states, including the Borno state, where this Christian mother and her Christian children live in fear, unable to escape to freedom in the USA because they are Christian. And of course, the Obama administration does not welcome them. So this is a widespread problem. It's actually very common to persecute Christians. And now this is officially the State Department policy. I wonder if that began again under Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. So anyway, that's the report from Front Page Mag and thank you for uh, their reporting. Let's discern the spirits here. There is a spirit of discrimination against Christians. If you're Christian, you can't have rights under the Obama administration. In fact, if you're Christian, you must be excluded and often persecuted. This anti-Christian spirit is the spirit of antichrist. It may not be the antichrist that's prophesied to rule at the end time, but the Obama administration certainly displays many of the characteristics of an antichrist spirit, and that's a demonic spirit. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter five, blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness sake. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you. Say all manner of evil things against you falsely. For my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they pro persecuted, excuse me, persecuted the prophets which were before you. Let's pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you will give liberty to the captives. God, admit the good people to America and keep out the bad people. Help us to properly discern the spirits in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break, we'll preview tomorrow's show. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. 
Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Can I share with you a scripture from Matthew chapter 23? Jesus said, woe to you, Pharisees, teachers of the law, you hypocrites, you give your mint, dill, and cumin, but you've neglected the greater practice of law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Now, I know many of you are faithful givers. I appreciate your donations to this ministry, and we need your support to stay on the air, so please visit PrayInJesusName.org. On our next show, we'll talk about how Hobby Lobby is won a preliminary ruling against Obamacare. The New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, vetoes funding for Planned Parenthood, and a pro-abortion Texas senator is praised as a hero for killing children. God bless you, we'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.